Hello, this is Leo from CCS America. In today's live demo, I would like to show how to solve a very typical complex application in machine vision, uh, which is a sample that have a specular and wrinkle surface. Uh, in here, I have a very uh, typical package. You can see there is a plastic film on top, and this film is very specular and wrinkle. Now let's put it down in the camera. If we use a normal standard machine vision light, this will be the image we can get. Um, so you can see uh, there was a lot of glare because the surface is really specular, so we see a lot of glare. And also because the surface is really wrinkled, this glare will be here and there. And no matter where we put our light, we still will see the glare. So definitely the normal standard machine vision light is not going to work. Uh, traditionally, to solve this problem, we have two common methods. Uh, first is a uh, dome. So here is a 250 millimeter dome. We have the LED in the bottom, and then we have a reflection shell on top. So this light can create a uh, cloudy day illumination that will illuminate the, the sample from all different directions. And if we turn on the light, uh, let's increase the intensity a little bit, we definitely get a much better image compared to the normal bar light. However, there is two downsides. The first one is heat. Because of the camera hole, we can see a shadow in the middle of the image and because it's wrinkle, uh, the shape of the hole may distort but it will be there and definitely increase the noise and the other downside is just the don't take a lot of space it's gigantic uh, so at the end this uh, solution doesn't really work well in this specular and wrinkle surface another very common solution we will use is a polarizer and polarizer is really good to remove the surface glare. Here we have a ring light, have a polarizer on top, and also have a polarizer filter. When we use polarization, we need to use two, one in front of the light and one in front of the lens. We need to screw it on. And then I will turn on the ring light. Usually, polarizer will reduce the intensity a lot, so we definitely will need to increase the intensity of the light. And then, what we need to do is we we will need to rotate the polarization filter. And then, when these two polarization filter is perpendicular to each other, we should remove the glare. Uh, here must be the sway spot. But when we look at the image, we find out we can only remove the glare in certain area, but we still have some glare remaining. And also, because the surface is really wrinkled, we have some shadow in some other area. So this solution doesn't give a uniform and stable image. So in conclusion, the traditional method doesn't really solve the issue. So now I would like to bring out the uh, ideal solution, which will be the flat dome LFX V series. Let's look at the image first. This light is really bright, so let me turn down the intensity. So now you can see, we can get a very clear image, and there is no glare and no shadow. It will be really stable, for the image processing if uh, to find whether there is some print defect or any package defect. Let's take a deeper look to see what is this flat dome LFX series. This light actually uses a CCS original light guide technique. And if we look at the structure of the light, we have a transparent light guide in the center and then we put the LED on the side. And in this transparent light guide, we have a lot of micro dots. 
So when the light coming out from the LED, it will first pass inside the light guide and when it hit the micro dot, the micro dot will diffuse the light to the object side. And because it's a transparent light guide and the micro dot is really small, the camera still can see through it. So from the sample point of view, we will have the light coming from all different angles to create a true shadowless illumination. We already do the comparison in the live demo. Compared to the traditional dome, there is two major benefits. The first one is the flat dome FXV have much slim and compact design. It, it saves a lot of space. And the other benefit is because the flat dome doesn't have the camera hole, we won't see a shadow in the middle of the image. And also, because there is no camera hole, we can put the camera and lens anywhere we want. It's more flexible to put the location of the camera. We do have a wide product lineup for different applications. Uh, this LFX V series is available in 10 different emitting surface size and four common LED wavelengths red, white, blue, and infrared, which create a total 40 models, which means we can cover from the very small sample to all the way to a very big sample. We also can do customization for some special size and some special wavelength too. We actually already have the FX V for quite a long time. Uh, it originally come with the uh, come out as a FX series, and then we increased intensity and get the upgrade version LFX two series. And a couple of years ago, we increased the usability, increased intensity, and we uh, launched the LF LFX3. And the LFX-V is the latest and the greatest product. Uh, so in here, I would like to take a couple of minutes to uh, compare what is the difference between the new LFX-V series to the previous LFX-3 series. The major improvement we did in the LFXV is we reduced the micro dot size. In the old LFX3 series, because the micro dot is not small enough, when we're using this light, we need to make sure we open the aperture to reduce the depth of view, otherwise we will see the dot effect show up in the image. So we have the image comparison in the screen. The left side is taken with the old LFX3 series. The above one is with the aperture f1.8, so pretty big. So in this case, we have a very narrow, very shallow double view. So you can see there is no dot pattern in the image, really good. But if we close the aperture to f8, we begin to see the dot pattern show up in the image. On the other hand, if we use the new LFX V series, we can get a clear image at both f1.8 open aperture and f8 close aperture, which means for the LFX V series, it is more flexible and can cover wider range of applications. In the last topic, I would like to share some tips and tricks when we use this flat dome LFXV. Because of the light guide in the LFXV, the walking distance of this light is really flexible. We can use at the low walking distance and we can also use in the long walking distance. By changing the walking distance, we can change the collimation of the light to create different lighting result. So here we have a sample of, of a can that we all know the can surface, it has some 3D structure and it's also very specular. 
when we put the flat down in a very low walking distance, it the result will be really similar to a dome. So you can see we remove all the 3D structure of the can and we only see the print. Very clear image. And if we increase the walking distance, and we will increase the collimation of the light, and now the light is more like a coaxial unit. And you can see at 200 millimeter walking distance, uh, the light is really collimate and we can uh, highlight all the surface 3D structure. So in conclusion, we can, uh, changing the walking distance, can make the LFX V flat dome work similar to a dome light or similar to a coaxial light. So based on what we need to do, we can fine tune the walking distance and get the best image. So here is the uh, simple introduction about the flat dome LFX V. Let's take a look for some more sample. In this section, I'm going to show five samples in total, just to uh, want to give you some idea what kind of application will be best fit for flat on LFX V. So the first sample I want to show is a contact lens. Uh, the package of the contact lens have a lot of wrinkle and it's very specular, which make it really hard for the traditional light. But under the FX V, we can create a very uniform and no shadow image for both the front side and the back side. Another very common package sample will be a blister pack, which is really common in the pharmaceutical industry. And this blister pack also is really specular and have a lot of 3D structure on top. And also, with the flat dome line, we can get a very uniform image. So it's really for us, uh, easy to inspect whether there's a missing pill or if there's some defect in the pill. Another package sample is a chapstick. So the cylindrical shape of the chapstick really make, make this sample very hard. But again, under the flat dome line, you still can get a very uniform image and there's no shadow around the even the very uh, edge of the uh, chapstick. So until here we show three samples of the packaging. But LFXV is not only limited to the packaging. Uh, let me show you some other sample. The second very common sam uh, uh, sample for LFXV will be a metal part especially when they have some 3D shape and curve shape and also have some shiny or semi-shiny finish. So in here, we have a cylindrical metal part and there's some protocol on top. And under the FX V, we can get a very clear background and we can see all the protocol clearly. The third big category is in the semiconductor. Uh, here's a PCB. We have a lot of solder ball and the pad on top, which is really 3D and very specular. And this can be also done with the FXV light. Uh, let's focus on the pad and, so and the solder pattern. You can see we get a very clear coverage and very uniform image. Uh, so that's all the sample we show today, but FXV is not only limited to what we show today. Uh, you can imagine any sample that has 3D structure, winkle, and if the surface finish is shiny, specular, or semi-shiny, it will be all very good for the FXV. So here conclude the introduction for the flat dome FXV. Thank you.